let's uh, move on to our subject of today. A little late, but uh, I'll cover it. Okay, here it goes. Uh, we started by talking uh, the other day, or the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about light curving around obstacles, right? And we saw it in the gravitational lensing. We saw it in the slit experiment, you know. Um, actually, curving, is, it's, it's, there's two mechanisms out there. One is that it hits the uh, side of the slit, okay? And the other one is that it curves around the needle. And we talked about curving around the needle. It doesn't curve inwards. It curves outwards. It hits and bounces outwards. Never does a ball bounce inwards. That's the problem with uh, people using the particle hypothesis. And then, uh, so what they do is they make that particle hit the edge of the frame. Okay, and here it is, okay. Uh, well, uh, this is first the wave, and what um, Thomas Young uh, discovered, 1802, 1803, is that the, uh, uh, what he called the wave nature of light. He says when he shone it through two slits, he produced a bunch of fringes. He expected to see just two slits, just light going through each slit, and that's not what happened. There was inter an interference pattern. Uh, the dark ones are destructive interference, the light ones are uh, constructive interference. Okay, that was his um, conclusion, and it's pretty much on the money. Uh, what's the problem? The problem is that uh, when you do it with particles, okay, with waves, you can talk about interference. With particles, you cannot, okay? And that's the issue. The issue, the way they fixed it, uh, the mathematicians, and by the way, this is where the whole discussion was between Niels Bohr and Einstein in uh, 1926 at the Solvay Conference, the fifth Solvay Conference. And so they were talking about this. They said, look, when, when the source throws a particle, you know, photon, it hits the uh, slit, and it's going to move it. So the problem there is that according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, what you have is that you don't know the exact position, and uh, the, uh, you can have, you cannot know both the position and the, um, what is it, the um, uh, momentum of the particle, because the slit itself is being hit by something and it's going to move. A tiny amount, obviously, but see this the way they, they had them hit the edge and coming inwards, okay? You cannot do that if you remove, uh, you know, the slits. See, this is okay with, the, you can get away with a little bit of this by saying, okay, it hits the edge of the slit, you know, the frame. Now let's, let's replace the slit, and that's why we do it with a needle instead. Here's the needle. And we're going to remove the slit and going to replace it with a needle. And here's the slit. It hits the edge. That's what we showed just a minute ago. Okay. But now we're going to remove the slit. We're going to put a needle in the center. And it turns out that you can produce, you know, with a needle there, seen from above. Uh, if, if you do it with particles, it's going to continue outwards or bounce outwards. It's not going to bounce inwards. That's the issue. And that's the issue this other fellow has not been able to explain after three tries. Okay. We need to know how he's going to produce it physically, how after hitting the edge, it comes inwards instead of outwards. Our experience is outwards, okay? So that's why we use the needle. And now here's uh, my uh, needle experiment, which I did a few years ago. And uh, here you will see the setup, very simple setup. You can do it at home. You just put a laser pointer. You point it at a needle that's there uh, stuck to a cork. Okay, when you go to the end of the wall, okay, what do you find? You find the fringes, okay? That's what you will see, something similar to that. Okay, you can see the uh, fringes there. So it's produced by a needle. So you do not need slits. I don't know why, uh, even to this day, in every university on the planet, every school where they teach uh, the slit experiment, they do it with a slit. We don't need slits. In fact, slits confuses people because, again, like Einstein and Bohr, they thought it was the photon is bouncing against the frame of the slit. But once we remove that, just leave the needle in the center, now what does it bounce against? You know, now how does it turn the corner? And that's where the problem is. They cannot, they will never be able to explain that, okay, rationally. And that's the problem with this other fellow who said, oh, I can explain it with particles, but I don't know what the particles look like. Uh, they're not round, they're not cubic, they're not triangular. I don't know what they are. 
He just told us what they ain't. You know, how do you define a horse? Well, it's not a not a buffalo. It's not an elephant. It's not a, a shark. So he goes through all these knots. It's not this, not that, not the other. No, we don't want to know what it's not. We want to know what it is. And so this is how they define things by saying it's not. And you're wrong, Bill. You're always wrong, Bill. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Here's our mechanism. Uh, the uh, ropes from every atom in the flashlight or laser pointer are already connected to every atom in the needle that makes up the needle, which is connected to every atom on the wall. Okay, so they're all connected by, every atom is connected to every atom in the universe. Okay, so what happens? When, uh, when the light is turned off, uh, the frequency is too low, it's below the visible range. So we don't see any pattern on the wall, on the screen. What happens when we turn the flashlight on? Well, now suddenly we increase the frequency on every rope. Why? Because the atoms in the flashlight are pumping at a faster rate. That's what you did when you turned the light on. Now that the, the atoms are pumping faster, they uh, transfer or they relay that uh, higher torsion, that higher rate, to the atoms at the edge of the needle, really to every atom in the needle for that matter, but the ones we're concerned about are the ones at the edge. And from there, uh, the, what happens is the um, uh, atoms in the needle relay the signal to the atoms on the wall to which they were attached even before you began your experiment. And so what happens is you see this situation. That's why we see fringes and where the uh, ropes uh, are in sync. In other words, when uh, red matches red and blue matches blue, then you have constructive interference. When they're half uh, link apart from each other, uh, you have red with blue and blue with red, you have destructive interference. And that's why we see all these fringes. Very simple mechanism. No waves, no particles. It's just ropes because that's the mediator of light. It's a physical mediator. A rope is a physical mediator. So are the threads. Very simple stuff. Anybody can understand it. Ten-year-old can understand it. You might have questions. That's something else. But the issue here is, do you understand the proposal, the theory, what we're proposing, what the theory is? And these people start going off on a tangent, and they never answer the question. All I want to know if they understood it. I don't want them to believe it. I don't want them to say, I have knowledge now. None of that. Did you understand it? We explain. They understand. We're done with science. Belief. Knowledge, that's religion. That's something else. It has nothing to do with science. What you believe in, what you voted for. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we look at uh, this word singularity. What is a singularity? And you look up the Wikipedia, uh, peer-reviewed encyclopedia. They say it's not, but it is, right? A lot of people guarding all these articles. They won't let you change it any way you want. Okay, it says, in mathematics, a singularity is a point at which a given mathematical object is not defined, okay, or a uh, point where the mathematical object, mathematical object, what the hell is that, ceases to be well-behaved, okay, bad boy, misbehaved. Okay, so that's the definition of singularity. It's a point where the mathematical object is not defined, meaning an equation is not defined. They call it a mathematical object. There are no such things as mathematical objects. And that's the problem. These people start using this weird language, this irrational language, then they introduce it into physics. That's where the problem is. They start talking about mathematical objects and they turn them into physical objects. You know, just casually it morphs into a physical object. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, this is another uh, site. Okay, it's uh, from the National Academy of Science, uh, Sciences. It says, the science behind space. Whoa, okay, let's find out. What is the singularity of the Big Bang? Because the Big Bang allegedly started a, a singularity. How did they come up with that idea? Well, they took all the galaxies out there and they say they're all running away from us. Why? Because they're all, what, red-shifted? And red-shifted means that, according to the mathematicians, right, that everything is flying away from us if we're gonna follow the Doppler effect, right? So it's like, you know, when the uh, siren you know, comes towards your uh, ear, it goes ee, when it leaves, it goes ee. So the waves are you know, spread apart. And that's why they concluded 
that all the redshift that we see out there is uh, running away from us, so whether it's a galaxy, a star, or a planet, whatever. And the problem with that is that, yeah, we do have uh, the local group, you know, like uh, Andromeda, and it's coming towards us, and it's blue shifted. And you say, well, hold it, how come all the galaxies are flying out, and all these guys in the local group are coming towards us, they're all blue shifted, what's going on here? And so they answer the question by saying, uh, it's a, uh, we have gravitational or electromagnetic attraction overcoming the expansion, you know, the dark energy that's pushing everything outwards. That, that's how they explain it. Okay, so whatever. I'm not going to di digress so much, but you say, how did the universe begin? How will it end? The science. Here's the science, okay? The Big Bang Theory says that the universe came from, came into being from a single, unimaginably hot and dense point. So we have unimaginably, that's okay, I can't imagine it, right? <laughs> hot and dense singularity. I thought singularity was a mathematical concept, as we just read, right, or heard from Wikipedia. It's a mathematical concept. Suddenly, it turns into a hot, dense thing. They call a point or a singularity. So this mathematical concept suddenly becomes a thing. Now they're going to introduce it into physics. They're going to shove it into physics against your will. You know, whether you like it or not, they're going to shove that singularity into physics where it don't belong. It doesn't belong in there at all. It's got to stay in mathematics. It says, more than 113 billion years ago, it didn't occur in an already existing space. In other words, it wasn't a point surrounded by space, this dark stuff, this vacuum. No. Uh, it initiated the expansion or cooling of space itself. So that little dot contains space. And so what's outside of the little dot? What's giving shape of this singularity? Well, we don't have to worry about that because the singularity has no size, no diameter, no radius, no volume, no shape, no size, no nothing. It's absolutely nothing. And they start with this nothing and say, from this nothing, came, something came out. And what was that nothing? Well, it was a point singularity, a mathematical point, a mathematical singularity. It came from a number. <laughs> from a calculation, from an equation. That's where it came from. Okay, so unless you understand that, you don't understand what these people are saying. Okay, so here we have one person, and uh, she's part of the PBS. I, mean, God, I call it BS. I forget. The, I always forget to put the P. Just BS. Bunch of BS. And here she is. She's a caricature of a scientist. She works uh, parallel to this other fellow, Matt uh, uh, O'Dowd, who runs his space-time... Uh, channel on um, PBS, on BS, okay? And she says the following, she says, mathematicians use the word singularity to describe a problematic point. First of all, she says, describe, okay? The second one, she's talking about a point. What is a point? Well, if we follow good old uh, Euclid, a point is zero-dimensional nothing. It's uh, got no dimensions, meaning it's nothing. <laughs> Zero D, okay? No size, no shape, no diameter, no radius, no nothing. Uh, and it says a uh, singularity is a point where a quantity becomes infinite. So they're not talking about physics, they're talking about math. They're saying a quantity is infinite, whatever that means, okay? Uh, because infinite in math just means counting incessantly. And they, count, they use the word infinite to refer to counting incessantly, okay? And so that's the part of the problem, their language. It gets weird when that mathematical quantity is supposed to represent something in the physical world. Yeah, absolutely, you cannot convert that mathematical quantity into anything physical. That is the problem. That is the serious problem with, with the singularity. Because these people take this mathematical quantity uh, undefined mathematical quantity, this infinite amount, and they say, okay, I'm going to use that now uh, to as a baseball bat. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't use it in physics. But see, that's where they start. They start Big Bang there, and uh, even worse, they, they, they use it for black holes. And we got a little problem there because, you know, Big Bang is a bunch of, what do they say, a bunch of concentration of mass that's in there in that little 
not little, I'm sorry, zero dimensional, no size point. It's all concentrated there, right? And it's gonna expand. It's gonna ex explode, it's gonna big bang it, right? And the black hole is the opposite. It sucks in. And you say, well, why didn't it suck it in you know, uh, when, when we had the Big Bang, why didn't everything just get compressed and stay there? And you just, if anything, compress it even further. No, here they have it exploding, here they have it imploding. And so uh, we have a problem between uh, the singularity of the black hole and the singularity of Big Bang. They're, they're kind of uh, working at cross purposes here. Okay, okay so here we have uh, this lady and she says, Paul says, once you reach the North Pole, this is an example she gives, You'll cycle infinitely many time zones during your 24-hour walk, whatever that means. <laughs> so she doesn't know what she's meaning, but she says, whatever that means, you walk around in circles, but you can't walk around in a circle in a zero-dimensional point, okay? And that's why it's infinite, because there's nothing there. There's no space there. There's no volume. So you're circling nothing. <laughs> and it's worse than nothing. You're not even circling, because circling would at least require some shape, some space. And here they're saying there's no space, but you're circling. So that's when they say, well, that's why we call it a singularity. And they call the North Pole a singularity, and they call the South Pole a singularity because of that. Okay, so yeah, these people are talking nonsense that they cannot imagine, let alone using the wrong language to present it, because they can't. They cannot transform their math into physics. That's the problem. Okay, so what does good old Matt say? Because he's uh, going to participate here, right? He's going to come in in this show for, from this lady, and he's going to tell us something which is absolutely important, which a lot of people out there are not aware of. And that is that a black hole is absolutely nothing. I talked about that in a video the other day, and people went over the hill there, over the top. Um, <clears throat> what's the issue? The issue is that these people tell you in your face okay, that a black hole is absolutely nothing. What do I mean by that? I mean that it's zero dimensional, it has no size, it has no shape, it has no radius, no diameter, no volume. It has no matter because all matter has been crushed completely, completely out of existence. And since mass is the quantity of matter, it has no mass either by definition. So we have absolutely nothing in front of us. That's the definition of a black hole, okay? And uh, just in case, so you say, well, that's you, Bill, you're saying that. No, no, we're gonna let Matt tell you that, okay? So here it is, I'll probably do it a couple times so that you get it right. Here it goes, listen carefully to good old Matt, here it goes. What if the massive object itself has zero size? That's the singularity of a black hole, where density and gravity do go to infinity. Here it goes again. What if the massive object itself has zero size? That's the singularity of a black hole, where density and gravity do go to infinity. Okay, so what is a black hole? What is the size of a black hole singularity? Well, it's zero D. There's nothing there. And that's what's forcing uh, stars to orbit around nothing because it's absolutely nothing. Singularity is absolutely nothing. It's a quantity that has nothing to do with physics, but they're telling you in your face that the singularity has no physicality whatsoever. It's got no shape, no size, no diameter, no nothing, no volume. So the question is, what is a black hole? Okay, here's the, all these people are studying black holes today. If you look up papers of black hole in the literature, you'll just be overwhelmed. There's a black hole paper written every second of the day. Lots of people publishing stuff on black holes. And the question is, what are they studying? What are all these people around the planet Study. What are they? What are they talking about? There's no, nothing there. You cannot talk about a black hole because it's absolutely nothing. You cannot say a black hole does this or that. The singularity of a black hole, which is the meat 
of a black hole and surrounded by this event horizon, which is the region of influence of the singularity, okay? This singularity has no size, no nothing, no diameter, no volume, nothing is there. And people don't understand that. And then I add to that, just in case to rub it in, that uh, Hawking says this in his book. He says that, you know, Chandra Sekhar won the Nobel Prize in 1983, Subramanian Chandra Sekhar. He won the Nobel Prize for proving mathematically that a star three times or more bigger than our sun collapses to zero size. So here we have Chandrasekhar. He won the Nobel Prize for saying that. Now we have Matt. Here we are, what, 2024. He says the same thing. It's got no size, no shape. That's a singularity. That's the meat of a black hole. And then we have, uh, obviously, the problem where, you know, the black hole singularity sucks things in, whereas the Big Bang explodes them outwards. You know, these people are just contradicting themselves. They never resolve their contradictions. They live with paradoxes. Okay, so uh, here it is. We have a singularity, and it moves a, a star around. Okay, in this case, the sun. It doesn't matter. A star would look something like that. And it's going around this mathematical singularity, which is, I, I drew something because I wanted you to see something, but really that something is not there because it has no shape, no size, no matter, meaning no, sh no mass either because mass is the quantity of matter or a measure of quantity of matter. It has no uh, volume, no diameter, no radius. We have absolutely nothing in front of us, and it moves a star far away uh, by what remote control action at a distance, which is another term for witchcraft, black magic. So that's what they have to explain. You know, how does even even assuming singularity were something, how does it do it? How does it affect that star physically? What's coming in contact? What's connecting the uh, star to the singularity? What physically connects it? And yeah, unless they can explain these, uh, uh, you know, they make us have to make an assumption about what object is connecting the two. Then you're talking about black magic. They call it action at a distance. That's uh, witchcraft. That's what it is. Okay, so here are the conclusions for today. Okay, it says the concussions. <laughs> Not the conclusion. I, I call them the concussions. We're going to have a lot of concussions here. Singularity is a mathematical nonsense, poppycock, but it belongs to math only. Singularity does not belong to physics. It has nothing to do with physics. But, you know, Big Bang is known as a singularity. This singularity pushes things outwards, okay? It's exploding. It's big banging. The black hole, on the other hand, the singularity of the black hole pulls things inwards. We don't know how it does it because they never explain the mechanism. They just say it's mass, but even mass is wrong because mass is the quantity of matter, and they claim that the black hole crushes all matter out of existence. There is no matter, and if there's no matter, there's no mass. See how simple it was? Very straight, straightforward. And uh, so then, again, by what mechanisms do the big, the big Bang and black hole push and pull respectively you know, uh, light or whatever, inwards or outwards. You gotta explain the mechanism. And uh, <clears throat> and then again, how does a zero D nothing, which is what a black hole is, how does it influence matter? Okay, and if you can answer that question, uh, you won't win a Nobel Prize till <clears throat> they'll just say that you're wrong. 